A great way to describe metrics is to begin by explaining who uses metrics. Metrics is different things to different people in the organization, but I'm going to start near the beginning of a typical workflow. First, metrics is a really helpful tool for an estimator. Let's take a look. Here's a pretty typical project, estimator wanting to produce 45,000 tickets. These are going to be produced 2026 on the Speedmaster 102 sheet-wise. Metrics very quickly returns a result of 11,250 sheets. Now the estimator looks at the content, maybe a PDF file, and says, you know, there's actually no image near the bottom of the sheet. I wonder if I can get a better result, a better estimate. Changes the dimensions, metrics immediately comes back and says we can actually drop that to 9,000 sheets. A huge step forward for the estimator trying to produce a really sharp estimate. Here's a project that's a little more complicated. I'd like to do an estimate for a product with 11,000 flat cards and 6,000 brochures. I want to find the very best way to do this. I'm going to use a different mechanism here and give metrics multiple ways of working the project. I'm going to offer multiple presses that are available or that might be available later. And going to give metrics different sheet sizes. I can select individuals. I can select them all. I can order some stock for this project. Metrics very quickly calculates and comes back with a best case result based on cost. Metrics does give me other options and I could certainly sort through them and pick one, but I'm after the sharpest estimate I can, so I'm going to choose what I believe is and what metrics confirms for me the most cost effective solution. Using metrics alongside my estimating tool, I've now got a really great idea of how to estimate it. So I'm going to save this project into the database. I save it into the database and I change it to a type of estimate so that a job planner can pick it up later. Let's take a look at that person's role next. A day later the estimate has become a job. So the job planner looks for the metrics project flagged with a type of estimate, opens it, looking at the job ticket has realized that the customers changed the quantity of one of the products to 13,000. We've also noticed that the stock we had uh, expected to run isn't available, so we need to change it. Pretty substantial change, and yet very quickly Metrics comes back with a best case scenario, instant and trustworthy. Now because it's destined for production at this point, that job planner goes and adds dimensions to it. These help with the diagrams we're about to produce. We can add a couple, we can add a lot to it, and reposition them where necessary. Job Planner now goes and adds marks. These are pulled from the database where it's filtered against the current press and working style and even filters against the current colors in the project to make sure we have the right mark set. Next, the Job Planner goes and produces some diagram reports. These are stuck in the job bag and become extremely helpful for everyone that's going to see this project onwards. We can zoom in here and see what the projects look like, the quantities, the overs, press information, etc. They make fantastic diagrams. No more hand-drawn diagrams. The project is now changed from an estimate type project to a production project and saved into the metrics database. Work that used to take a long time, tedious, inconsistent, now takes mere moments in metrics and it's trustworthy. By this stage, pre-press should have very little to do. They might open a project up, find that project in the database, and make changes to it, hopefully minor changes, such as things like taking a color bar and changing it to a different type of color bar. Typically, though, the main involvement from PrePress is to take this project and export it from metrics now directly into PrePress. And that's typically done as a JDF in position. Could be a fully imposed PDF file. And we can also send data out directly to cutting equipment, folding equipment, and even bindery equipment in some cases. I'm going to make an important point here. As soon as the discussion turns to exporting JDF impositions and imposed PDF files, it can be easy for people with a pre-press oriented mindset to confuse metrics with traditional desktop imposition software. Let me say that as much as metrics can and does replace such software, it's decidedly much more. Let me illustrate. Let's take a look at a fairly complicated project. Different quantities, different sizes. I need a job plan produced, not just an imposition. I want someone to think this project through. Metrics takes a run at it, finds a solution for us. I can then look at the costs associated with this, try different solutions, 
change a sheet size to something else. Ask metrics again. I get a brand new layout virtually instantly. I could then even tweak the results a little bit. I could then try a very different approach. I'd like to take a run at this project by asking different questions. Going to ask metrics, what if I had different ways that I could work the project? Different presses available, and maybe even different sheet sizes. I'm effectively asking metrics to think of lots of different solutions. Metrics then very quickly gives me solutions based on real production costs. I choose the appropriate one and I'm done. How is this possible and what makes this so different than the experience typically found with desktop imposition software? A lot of it comes down to the database. Let's go take a look. In the database, there's actual production equipment. You set up your presses. There's characteristics of your equipment in here. It's physical constraints and requirements. And also, very importantly, costs associated with that equipment. The hourly rate of the press, running speed, make ready hours, cost per plates. Information that helps us know, along with the stock costs, what the cost of every layout should be. The power behind metrics is this great combination of powerful fitting algorithms and real production costs, not simply the ability of imposition software to fit items on a sheet. Let's take a look next at how metrics can plan work that's more standardized, in contrast to the projects I've shown you so far, which have required our creative fitting algorithms. Other solutions handle this type of work using templates. In contrast, metrics uses standard layouts, and there's a big difference. Let's take a look at this project here. Simply using our fitting algorithms, metrics creates a solution, but now leaves us with a choice. In contrast, I'm going to ask metrics to find, if possible, a standard in the database, which it does. What's important to understand here is this is not a system of possible choices. Metrics either finds the single available standard or nothing, no middle ground. Let's take a look at the 16 pagers. Again, Metrics finds the standard and applies it to them. Let's take a look at another example, an 8.5 by 11 item on a pretty standardized sheet, 2538. We look, and Metrics finds a standard. If anything changes, like the sheet size, down to a 1925, we do a search, cross our fingers, and Metrics found a standard. Now, if I should ever choose something for which there is no standard found, let's go up to a larger sheet size. We do a search, and metric says, no, there's no standard. In this case, we fall back to the auto layout algorithm. Ask metrics to come up with a brand new layout. There it is. And if I like the results of that, I'll quite likely save this layout as a standard in the database so other users can pick it up in the future. One of the hallmarks of metrics is its incredible ease of use. Take this eight pager in a saddle stitch book. If I want to change its structure, I just click it, grab it, and drag it. I've just restructured my entire book. Looking at the eight pager, totally different pages on it now. Big change, simple to do. Let's take that eight pager and let's fold it differently. We just look in the metrics database, change it from a right angle fold to a long fold. Instantly, we see the results. I've now got an asymmetrically folded signature. Now, of course, I've changed the imposition as a result. So to deal with that, I just very quickly click, change it to a work and tumble layout, ask metrics for a standard layout. There's one there, and the book has been restructured. Really significant change is done incredibly easily. Let's say I'd like to apply shingling to this book. I've got an odd signature in here. But Metrics knows how to deal with that. We just select the project and ask Metrics to apply shingling to it automatically. Metrics figures out the shingling for the entire project and applies it to all the pages in the appropriate way. If pages shouldn't be shingled, like some of the pages in that signature there, Metrics turns them off automatically. If I change the structure of the book, Metrics again knows how to deal with that and changes the pages. Basically, you just tell metrics how you'd like it manufactured and let us worry about the details like shingling and collation marks and so forth. In conclusion, I'd like to leave you with some thoughts from existing metrics customers.